hello and welcome to my channel today i am making lamb with a mushroom onion red wine vinaigrette sauce and i am making asparagus uh just a butter herb asparagus um and i'll also be making homemade mashed potatoes so come on with me all right first as you can see i got my water boiling um, for my potatoes, I'm only doing um, seven, uh, eight, uh, seven to eight large potatoes. I've also am dicing up thinly sliced uh, mushroom. So I'll be doing about 10, um, I wouldn't say they're large mushrooms, but pretty good size. Clean them off really good and um, um, pat them dry. Um, and then I slice them up pretty thinly. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to dice my onion. As you can see, I have a medium sized onion and I am going to cut that open and dice it. Um, I actually have two packs of uh, lamb chops. Um, and these are the um, lamb lion chops. So I have two packs of these which uh, totals out to about two, four, six, eight, ten, like 12 lamb chops. And I'm just gonna do um, some fresh asparagus. Uh, so first, let's go ahead and dice up our uh, mushrooms. So now we're going to go ahead and cut our onion up. We already got our mushrooms ready to go. So we're going to set our mushrooms aside. And got my onion. So what I do to dice my onion is I'm going to do some slices, some thin slices. I'm going all the way across on both sides. Be careful not to cut yourself. Because don't nobody got time for that blood. So... I, li I don't like onion smells on my hands and really don't like to, you know, deal with food on my hands. So I wear gloves and I suggest even if you're at home, wear gloves if you can. Keep everything nice and sanitary. So as you can see, I have my onion cut up and then I'm just going to lay it on its side and then start slicing and dicing my squares and as you can see pretty good squares now I'm gonna do the whole onion that way and I'll be right back all right so my husband is helping me today and he is tossing those potatoes in that boiling water and um, we're going to let them boil to a truly soft texture all the way through using a fork um, to puncture in the middle of it to make sure that they're actually boiled all the way through. I'm going to keep the top on for a little bit, but usually it will overboil, so you got to keep your eye on it. And when it gets kind of too bubbly, you want to either give it some air or take the top off altogether. But let's go ahead and let it start boiling. All right, so now we are going to put our pan um, in on the heat, and I'm going to add some vegetable oil. Sometimes I use uh, olive oil, but for this I'm going to use vegetable oil because it is uh, lamb chops. Lamb chops is not a fatty meat, so I'm going to put some vegetable oil, and that's about a third tablespoon um i'm a third third cup like it's not too much oil just put enough in there to coat the pan i'm gonna let that get hot and then i'm going to add my lamb chops which i will clean off with cold water so i'm gonna rinse these uh down with some cold water and put a little apple cider vinegar in my water to make sure that these are completely clean before I cook them. 
All right, guys, um, now that my lamb chops are all clean, now I have laid them out to dry, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get them seasoned. All right, so now let's go ahead and, and season up these chops. We're gonna do garlic powder, and then we're going to do, of course, some um, just a little bit of onion powder because the base would be um, onion, but I wanted to get some type of onion flavor on these uh, lamb chops a little early on. Of course, we're gonna do some pepper. Now, you're not gonna find that I use a lot of pepper in any of, I uh, let salt in any of my dishes. Um, so, if I do use salt, it's, it's definitely going to be a sprinkle. It's not going to be a lot, but I do use um, pepper generous, gen, gen, well, I can't get that word out, y'all, generously. And um, we're going to do some uh, paprika. So that's going to be some smoked paprika, if I can actually find it. Here we go. Smoked paprika, not a lot, but you know, smoked paprika give you a little kick to your stuff. And then we're of course going to do <clears throat> um, some other uh, things such as, let's do some uh, basil. Just a little bit of basil on my, on my meat. And one of my secret weapons is two actually. Adoba, adobo. We're gonna put some of that on. And then I love to do uh, the Kinder's Buttery House or Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. About a tablespoon of that. And then we're gonna get all of these mixed up real good. And turn my eye down some. I got my my oil is hot. Ready to go. I'm going to sprinkle lastly some rosemary. Some dried rosemary. Sometimes I use the fresh rosemary. And then I'm going to go ahead and add all of this to my frying pan. going to get a good sear on these lamb chops. There we go. Yeah, my frying pan is big enough to get all 16 in there. So we're going to fry it on that side right there and allow all of the good juices of the lamb get into the frying pan, into the oil to bring up that flavor. And then we're going to go ahead and enhance that flavor. Okay guys, so now we have a good sear going on on our lamb chops. We're gonna let it uh, cook for a little bit longer because we want them to be tender. We're right now going into about 12 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna let it cook for a little bit longer. Um, put the top back on so it can cook from within as well. All right, fam. We back at it. So this has been cooked in for about 12 minutes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not 12 minutes. I do apologize. 16 minutes, 8 minutes on both sides. So we're going to take it out. And as you can see, all that beautiful lamb stock. 
is there. Uh, it is nice looking. Oh, they look good. So, there we go. Now, all of these beautiful ingredients, we're going to use every last bit of it. I'm going to use, not this whole thing of margarine, but um, I buy them like this because I do some baking. Um, but this is um, some unsalted gray AA uh, butter, real butter, not margarine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about a half a stick. Uh, from this and I am going to add it to uh, my seasoned lamb base there we go. and we're going to go ahead and get that nice and melted all right so it's almost completely melted and I'm going to go ahead and turn my eye up I'll turn light on here so you can see better and as you can see my potatoes are still boiling you and your mother Ms. Miller have opened your case to prove to the defendant that he is all right now we are going to add the onion the diced onion that we diced earlier and we're going to let that cook is that correct yes your honor Mr. Langston, you claim you have always known you weren't Ms. Garnett. We're going to. The results are revealed. You are the and one don't worry about what you got playing in the background. Now, I'm playing work? paternity court it's on my um, refrigerator TV. Okay. Um, All right. So then I'm going to add some roasted garlic. And this is um. And this is the gourmet garden kind. About a tablespoon of that. So this, this stuff is really good replacement for fresh garlic. I have fresh garlic, but I don't feel like dealing with garlic right now. And then I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce. Only about a tablespoon of that. And then I'm going to get it mixed. And let it simmer for about three minutes before I add the mushroom. All right, so the simmering has happened for about three minutes. Now I'm going to go ahead and add mushroom. I looked in, I see this guy sitting on the couch. There we go. With her, like he's running this game to get up on something. All right. I said, What's going on? So then I'm going to cook this for, say, about. You Another yeah. five minutes. I don't believe it. So you believe that she was with somebody? Um, and then yeah, I believe that. So Miss Miller, when after you put that, that in there, you want to go ahead and add some better than bouillon. It is a beef based stock, but the flavor in this um does wonders for lamb. So I'm just going to add a tablespoon of that. Cousin. She admitted to me. I'm going to add some that? of this. She kept saying no. Then she came around. Okay, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, I, I gave her something. Um, she kept knocking on the door. Back. I am so I, only I going to. What are you giving me that stuff with? I'm saying, yeah. I'm going to only add maybe two tablespoons of wine. There we go. You did that. Say that to me. Give up off of that. And I am going to put my top on and let it simmer for about five minutes. All right, to add just a little bit of acidity, acidity to this, I'm going to add some balsamic vinegar of Mardina. Just a, about a teaspoon of that, just to add some acidity to it. All right, so now... 
Woo! There we go. And I have so it's much nice. Butter. When you came back into my life when I was an adult, it was like a piece of the And simmer down. So we're gonna re-add our lamb. You know, you know that there's so much. You know, he's been in Chicago all his life. He's still getting lost. I get lost in a circle. Especially when I was in Chicago, I was like, this is there's just you know, not only the person now. So there's space. And I'm going to turn the eye down uh, to about, let's say, turn it on a medium heat. And um, I'm going to let it simmer for about uh, another, say, six minutes on both sides with the top on. All right, y'all. So this is what we about to do. We about to make some homemade mashed potatoes. And to make homemade mashed potatoes, what I do is, um, like I said earlier, I boiled these potatoes down. Oh, all right, y'all. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start these homemade mashed potatoes. Um, uh, this is a uh, boiled potatoes. I use Idaho potatoes. I think I used a total of seven of these. I had my my wonderful helper, my husband, uh, cut them, uh, shaved them for me. So he actually took all of the skin off. Normally, I would take more uh, of the skin off where I'm not having any of these imperfections. But hey, a helper is a helper. You can't, can't be chosen when you want some help. So I went on ahead and boiled them all the way down. As you can see, they're kind of falling apart. I am putting them in my mixer. Um, I can use, uh, I use this, uh, this tab right here because this one right here is really nifty and um, it has the three whips to it and it can actually really beat the mashed potatoes pretty good. So what I do is I, I add it all there and um, get all of my little pieces at the bottom. You can't be, you know, don't be wasteful. And I'm going to go ahead and start it on a slow mix. Just to get it a little bit broken up and then oop, let me not lose my potatoes so let me grab me a spoon and all right so i'm gonna go ahead and all right so it's a little bit as you can see this is all soft mashed potatoes that, that uh, we're just at the beginning stages. So what I'm gonna do, I like a lot of butter in my mashed potatoes. So this is like a stick of butter, equivalent to a stick of butter. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of, of pepper. One tablespoon there, another tablespoon there. And then I'm going to, I'm actually am gonna add salt. I don't use a lot of salt, but I'm just gonna use about that much salt. And I like mine with a little bit of garlic flavor in them. So I'm gonna put a little bit of fine garlic and Kinder's buttery seasoning. All right, and then I'm going to uh, let the butter mix in along with those seasonings on a slow, I'm using my hands, but I actually got a guard, so let me get my mixer guard. Alright, so that way I don't have my spillage. I'm going to turn it up. Oh, it's still coming out. Carnation milk is what I use for my mashed potatoes. So I'm going to open this.
perfect consistency here. We're gonna go ahead and pour in a half a cup of carnation milk, like a half a can, which is equivalent to a half a cup. We're gonna turn up that beaten. And I'll be right back. All right, so we're on a soft beat right now for the mashed potatoes. And now I'm gonna turn it up. I don't like no lumps in my mashed potatoes. So we're turning it, we're turning up the heat. And while we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and get my pan ready so I can go ahead and get my asparagus cooked. All right, y'all. I got this hot butter here. This is about a half a stick of butter. And what I'm making now is I'm gonna go ahead and make me some asparagus. I clean the asparagus off and then I dry them. And we're gonna add them to the butter. Now the thing about asparagus, pretty it's pretty fast cooking. Um, it's faster than what people think it is. You just got to make sure you follow some steps, which is cleaning, drying, and excuse me, making sure that the butter is hot before you put them in. And you can put them all in at the same time. I'm just making sure that they're all dry. And these are going to be just some light seasoning asparagus. It's a nice size asparagus that I got from my local Sam's Club. As you can see, so nice and pretty. And I'm just going to periodically move these around my pan to make sure that each asparagus is getting cooked. And immediately, I'm adding some salt, because of course, it brings out just the flavor, not a lot of salt, just a little bit of salt, a pinch of salt. And then I'm going to add just a little bit, um, not a whole lot, of some seasoning uh, salt. So, And the only reason why I add seasoning salt is because I add such a little bit of salt that just the seasoning salt just adds a pinch of flavor to it. And now I'm gonna let it fry. And I'll be back. Okay, y'all. Let me take a look. This is the asparagus. And as you can see, it's cooking quite lovely. It'll be done in a little bit. My, that's the finishing touches on the lamb chops. And my mashed potatoes are ready to go. I'm about to start plating. All right, y'all, there you have it. We got asparagus, lamb chops, and mashed potatoes ready to serve. Looks good, huh? Smells good and tastes good too, promise you. Thanks for watching my channel. Like, share, and subscribe.